Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at a game between Vichy Anand and Joe Lettier. This was played back in 1997, and Vichy Anand has white pieces, so he opens with e4, and after d5, we see the Scandinavian defense. Now, this isn't played very commonly anymore, but back in the 90s, this was uh, played quite often. So after e takes d5, queen takes d5, white kicks the black queen with knight c3. So white gains some time on this queen. After, after queen a5 here, you can see that the black queen is relatively safe now. It's onto the side of the board, and it does exert some pressure here along this diagonal, which is shown after d4. This knight is somewhat in the pin now. So after d4, we see uh, knight f6, just controlling these two squares. White also responds with knight f3, and now we see c6. And the idea behind c6 is just to get some extra control of this d5 square, but also open up this diagonal for the queen to fall back to if it needs it. White continues with bishop c4, adding a lot of pressure here on this f7 pawn. And black responds in kind, actually, develops his own bishop here on f5. And this is really the idea behind the Scandinavian defense. It allows you to get this bishop out on a good diagonal without having it hemmed in with something like e6. White plays knight e5, which threatens this f7 pawn here. So black plays e6. And after e6, we see g4. So white has two defenders on this pawn, which is attacking this bishop. Black only has two attackers here, so he has to step back to a safe square, but now white really presses the issue here with h4, threatening h5. That wouldn't trap the bishop, of course, because the bishop could still come here, because this knight's pinned and it's also protected here, but uh, it's about just trying to harass this bishop, really, because this is a relatively good bishop, and white's using it to gain space and time on uh, this bishop here. So after bishop g6, you see h4, and now we see knight bd7. So black's just getting his pieces out, White captures, black captures back, and now we see h5. So, putting the question to this bishop, which now comes to e4, attacking this rook here on h1. Now, white could castle kingside or something like that, but then you'd see his king would be very exposed. Both of his kingside pawns here are forward, so the white king would not be very safe. So instead of doing that, uh, white moves his rook to h3 to get out of that attack and also maybe bring his rook across to one of these squares. Now, if black played something like bishop d5 here, he would have been pretty okay. It's a good square for the bishop and uh, challenges this relatively good bishop here. However, black pushes the envelope here with bishop g2 attacking this rook. And this is where it gets interesting because instead of playing something like rook g3 and then bishop d5, we actually see rook e3, which as you can see, is pointing straight at this king here on e8. Black's king is still in the center, as is white's. But with this rook e3 now, you can see that there's a very clear line of sight going on, especially with this bishop here. So after rook e3, we see knight b6. And the idea black has is not only to attack this bishop, of course, but to come to d5, because here he would be attacking e3 and c3 at the same time. The white bishop drops back to d3, which is a good diagonal on this h7 square. And now you can see knight d5, so attacking the knight and the rook. Now, this is where Anand gets pretty fantastic, because he plays f3, and white is clearly just inviting black to take here on e3, but in exchange, after f3, you can see here now that this black, black bishop here on g2 is trapped. So white is trying to use his pawns here on f3, g4, and h5 to trap this bishop here on g2. So a very good move. And now we see black, bishop b4. So black's developing at the same time, but also just adding extra pressure here to this knight. And of course, after captures, captures, bishop captures, there'd be another fork here with this bishop attacking this rook and king. So that's what um, white's really... Black's really threatening here. So white decides to resolve this by just playing king f2. And now you can see this bishop is under attack, but this pin is also broken at the same time. So because the pin is broken now, black captures on c3, b takes c3. And after queen takes c3, you can see here now that both of white's rooks are being threatened. White protects this one with rook b1. And you can see here already now this is... 
um, coming down on to b7. So the white rook could get activated and land on a very good attacking square. So after rook b1, we see queen takes d4. And you can see now that black has two attackers here on the e3 square. And it's also pinned this rook against this king here. Having said that though, this king will be able to clean up this bishop at any at any time really. So after queen takes d4, white decides to use this as a chance to activate his rook with rook takes b7. And now you can see here already, it's already doing a great job uh, coming across on this file here, but then the other rook coming down on this file here as well, pointing at this king. So this king's looking pretty exposed. Now, you may be wondering why black can't just castle here and get out of all the threats. The problem with this now is white has bishop takes h7. Because if the king takes h7, you would lose your queen here on d4. So this is a threat that white has in his back pocket. So because of that, the black king is still pretty much trapped in the center. So I think black's idea here after rook d8 was to try play something like rook d7 and try his best to swap himself out with this rook because he wasn't doing a lot on a8 and by swapping swapping with this rook you'd think that he would be uh, better off so i believe that's what black was thinking here after rook d8 but white has a very incredible tactic and it all starts with h6 and it's okay if you can't see it because it's a very complicated variation black wasn't able to see this attacking combination that vichy had in the game he accepts the pawn and from this point on, it's all over for black. I know that's surprising, but Fishy has a really uh, powerful attack. If you can see it, uh, feel free to pause and try guess what it is, but it's a pretty hard one to find. Okay, if you found it, congrats. The move is bishop g6. Double x glam. <laughs> Fantastic move here. So the idea is, of course, you can't take this because again, you're gonna lose your queen. And let's just say that black takes the white queen instead. Well, what would happen is first you'd end up with rook takes e6 check because this pawn is pinned against the king. You can't capture this rook. And after king f8, you'd have bishop takes h6 check only square to go to would be here. And after bishop takes f7, you can see that black king's attacked and this is protected by the rook. So this was the attacking combination that white had planned. Now you may be wondering what this had to do with h6 earlier on. And I'll explain that. So when White played h6 here. Let's just say White tried to play his tactic now, which was bishop g3. Of course, again, he can't take it because he'd be losing his queen. So let's just say he carried on. The problem here is that after rook takes e6, king f8, the bishop can't come here to check. It would have to come to a3, for example. But then after bishop a3, you can see here that black would have knight e7. And this is the key difference. Because after bishop takes e7, king g8, you can see here that the white king is, the black king rather, is safe. So that's why in order to play this tactic of bishop g6, white needed to play h6 first in order to open up this diagonal. It's a very deep idea. Black must have been confused why he was just uh, grabbing this rook, uh, this pawn rather, for what appeared to be uh, nothing. So that's the main tactic whoops 
bishop g3. Now, of course, after this, bishop g6 rather, after this, of course, black uh, could see the tactic, could see the mating net. So instead of actually playing queen takes d1, he plays knight e7. But the idea behind this is that this is protected by the rook now. And it also blocks this diagonal, these lines of attack that uh, white had in mind. But after knight e7, we see queen takes d4, rook takes d3, d4, and now rook d3. And after rook d8, rook takes d8, king takes d8, and the move to finish it off was just the very quiet bishop d3. And you can see here in this position that black is going to lose his bishop here on g2. So he's going to be down a piece. So because of that, black resigned. So that's the game. It all revolved around this really super critical bishop g6 move. Very hard to see. And that's why I thought it was a great game to have a look at. So well done if you managed to see that. And until next time, see you.